everyone, welcome to an exciting new season of 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. I'm Mary Garofello. It's a sex hormone in a can. You may not know it, but almost every time you open up a can of food, you may actually be swallowing a potentially dangerous synthetic estrogen. It's been going on for decades, and it's legal for now, even though Canadian health officials have banned it from baby bottles. It's a 16 by 9 investigation. You need to see to believe. This could be your dinner table any night of the week. A delicious plate of pasta with tomato sauce, some hearty soup, a tuna fish sandwich, and a side of baked beans and corn. Foods millions of Canadians consume daily. But it's what's inside the cans this food comes from that should be a concern to you. This is a chemical that the people who put it into plastic were insane. He is Fred Von Saul, a professor of biology at the University of Missouri. You may not know his name, but you probably know his work. He created a huge international stir within the scientific community two years ago after releasing a study on plastic baby bottles and the controversial chemical many of these bottles are made from called bisphenol A. This is a chemical that in 1936 was considered for use as a estrogen drug. Then in the 1950s, some tricky chemists found that they could link this chemical together and it creates a hard, clear, glass-like plastic. The only problem with that is the plastic is then made from a sex hormone. And it's the white lining inside these cans that we're talking about. It's bisphenol A. In fact, it lines just about every single can you consume. And it's big business in North America. Eight billion pounds of it are produced every single year. And according to the Centers for Disease Control, 95% of Americans have detectable levels of bisphenol A in their body. Bisphenol A is related to prostate cancer, breast cancer, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, learning impairments. And more. We've heard about bisphenol A in baby bottles, but what most people don't know is that it's in almost every can on our grocery store shelf. Bisphenol A is used as a barrier between the product and metal cans. According to Dr. Von Saul, the problem is that bisphenol A leaches into the food we eat. There's practically nobody in the United States that doesn't have measurable levels of bisphenol A that in animal studies have been shown to cause extremely wide range of adverse health effects. So in a 16 by 9 investigation, we conducted our own independent test of common foods we eat every day. We opened the cans and emptied out the food, rinsed them in very pure water, and then placed water into the cans, heated them up overnight, and then took the water out and extracted bisphenol A out of it. Every can we tested indicated detectable levels of bisphenol A. Measured in micrograms, the largest amounts were found in the cans of tuna, baked beans, Coca-Cola and Canada Dry Ginger Ale. But more concerning was the bisphenol A we found in the cans of baby formula, Infamil and Similac. The United States National Toxicology Program, in their assessment of bisphenol A, came to the conclusion that babies are ingesting amounts of bisphenol A from baby formula and baby bottles that would exceed levels that can cause harm. Every product you sent us had detectable levels of bisphenol A in it. We're always looking for data on bisphenol A in any type of food commodity and so we would be interested in those results. John Salomon is with Health Canada. Recently, Canada took a huge first step in this controversy by proposing banning bisphenol A from all baby bottles, but not from cans. He says Canada does have an acceptable level of bisphenol A. We do have a tolerable intake level that we have established for the general population. And that tolerable intake level is 25 micrograms per kilogram body weight per day. But according to Health Canada, those acceptable levels of bisphenol A do not apply to children. We don't have a specific figure for newborns and infants, and that is why we are 
taking a much more conservative approach in the risk assessment and the risk management strategy. All the canned foods we tested fell at or below Canadian acceptable levels. But Dr. Von Saul says, in his opinion, the only acceptable level of a sex hormone lining a can is no level at all. These safety levels are based on extremely outdated experiments that did not have the ability to detect hormonal activity of chemicals. Dr. Von Saul says when he places bisphenol A leached water onto a cancerous breast cell, the cancer cell multiplies rapidly. These amounts would massively stimulate these cells. We contacted all the parent companies for the products we tested and no one wanted to appear on camera. Although they repeatedly told us that bisphenol A is safe, they in turn directed us to the Food and Consumer Products of Canada and the International Formula Council who, after our repeated requests for an interview, also declined to be interviewed on camera. The FCPC disputes Dr. Von Saul's methodology, saying he did not test the product for bisphenol A, he tested the packaging, and that the second heat treatment he applied to the samples is not something a consumer would do. The FCPC says that all the products tested, quote, were within Health Canada's tolerable dietary intake level. The FCPC also provided an opinion from a toxicology consulting firm, which stated Dr. Von Saul's methodology, quote, does not replicate any testing method used by regulatory agencies and does not provide a meaningful assessment of the level of bisphenol A in the tested food. And the International Formula Council responded this way, the importance of quality infant nutrition far outweighs any theoretical risks for bisphenol A. Bisphenol A is simply not something that the public needs to be concerned about. Dr. Warren Foster is Director of Reproductive Biology at McMaster University. He says the government's decision to ban baby bottles made of bisphenol A was a political move to show they are going green and that people like Dr. Von Saul have polarized the scientific community over this chemical he doesn't believe is a problem. You have to appreciate that we're close to 1,000 papers on this chemical alone. That there is not uh, a consensus within the scientific community, either one way or the other. It's highly controversial. There's a difference between hazard and risk. Risk is something where we know there are adverse effects. That doesn't exist for bisphenol A. Why even have a hazard at all? Why should I even have anything that's labeled a hazard in what I eat every day? Can you imagine trying to avoid hazard? Getting out of bed in the morning, you could trip on the bed sheets, you could fall over your slippers. Dr. Foster, Everything this is, is hazardous. But this is a man-made product put into cans that we eat. Why should we then have someone put a hazard in something I purchase? Bisphenol A is used as a barrier. And the alternative is that you could have a rupture in your can, have it exposed to air, and be exposed to botulism. Now, as far as I'm concerned, botulism is a far greater hazard and risk to human health than bisphenol A ever will be. I think it's important that consumers uh, are aware that we are looking into this, we're taking the issue very seriously, but not to panic about the safety of canned foods, for example. I mean, as far as we're concerned, Canned foods that you find in the marketplace today are perfectly safe and consumers should not be changing their dietary habits. Dr. Von Saul says the public is not buying it and some have taken this issue to court. There are 15 major class action lawsuits for hundreds of millions of dollars in damages relating to bisphenol A in products. They are only concerned that right now they can tell people bisphenol A is safe and they can make money by selling it regardless of the harm it does.